It'd be easier for me if I turn away to flee, oh. Hey family, it's the Mobile Home Diva. And in today's video, I thought I would turn the camera on and talk Sorry, to- I can't search for videos on Apple Watch. I wasn't talking to you, Apple Watch. I have a mound of clothes to fold. And so I thought I would do a story time and that would help me to get the clothes folded as well as answer some questions that I received recently in the comment section of some of my videos. Um, several of you, but especially Veronica has a lot of questions. Some of them I don't think I particularly can answer, but I'm going to share my experience. In this video, I'm going to talk about land and our experience with the land process. Now, we found land, and I do have a video, I'll link it in the iCard above that talks about foundations. I also have a video that talks about how to find land, and I'll link that as well in the iCard above. But in this video, I'm going to tell you my, our experience as far as preparing the land um, after we close and getting ready to bring the house out. So the first thing, of course, was finding land. We did a land home package and we used several resources to find our land, um, we actually found some land that we were interested in on realtor.com. After researching and researching and researching, talking to different realtors, um, and we were actually looking at another piece of property, and that's how we stumbled across the realtor that we eventually used and that property fell through well somebody else put um put it under contract before we could go and look at it so um that realtor helped us to find some other land and eventually was the land that we purchased so we closed on the land We did a land home package. So we closed on the house and the land at the same time. And immediately after closing, my husband wanted to come out to the land and see what he could accomplish without the contractors. So we actually purchased, and if there are pictures that I have to support what I'm saying, you guys, I'll make sure that I insert them as I go. The land that we purchased didn't need a lot in the way of like tearing down um, trees and stuff like that. We didn't have, a, we didn't purchase a piece of property that was overly built up. Our land for the most part was clear. Um, what we did it, have it, it was- It wasn't tearing down, it was cutting down, clearing. Right. We didn't have um, a piece of property that was overly consumed with a lot of trees and stuff like that. The property that we had was fairly um, clean. As you can see from the pictures that I'm putting, that I'm inserting here, um, it was fairly clean. What we did have was some trees that um, we didn't want to keep on the property. We were concerned about like maybe storms and the trees falling on the house and stuff like that. So my husband came out and him and his brother and his uncle um, came out and they cleared off a lot of the brush, cut down, yeah. cut down a lot of the brush and uh, cut grass. I and claws, he picked some trees that um, he didn't want to keep. Uh, how many trees did you cut down, honey? I cut down about, cut down about 
probably about uh about four tree, five. About four, four, five four, trees. Four, 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 five trees. So we lost about four or five trees. Um my husband actually cut them down himself. He had a chainsaw. Um and he was able to cut those trees down before the builders even came out to um start the setup process so that's what happened with our trees we decided to cut those down ourselves now let me just add a disclaimer here what what the builders told us that we might want to cut all the trees down okay so because because it would affect the uh you know the tree was a casualty to the house. What do you mean a to, casualty? Because, you know, you got a tree to on a close to a house, it's gonna be, you know, leaves and stuff getting on your house, the rot from the leaves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then when you have a storm, you know, the, the storm could, could blow the tree down into your onto your property, onto your house, right. damaging. Right. So you did keep one or two trees yeah. for shade, right? Right. Right. But those aren't really close to the house, and they were in a in a place where he was comfortable with leaving them. So that's what we decided to do for our property. Now, I can tell you that um, depending on how much money you have in the loan will depend on if the contractor's will take on that responsibility as a part of your loan or not. So they they may be able to do your cut your trees down or you may be responsible for that. So we're not here to quote prices or tell you what they're going to cover and what they're not. Right. You always want to talk to the people who are delivering your house, who you purchased the house from because Contract, they're the ones yeah. Right, who are going to set up contracts. Cause, Cause me and him talked about, you know, what, what trees I'm going to... What trees you would take here. Right, right. right. Because, see, they, they, the, the price would, would have been higher if... Somewhat higher if they had to clear some of the trees off. For us. Right. 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 So, that's the point, you guys. So, like I said, we're not here to tell you, like, how much it's going to cost. We can't tell you that. Right? In other words, we did a lot of work ourselves. We did work ourselves. We did a lot of... My husband was out here every day until we moved into this house. He did a lot of work himself. Now, that doesn't have to be your story. It depends on how much money you have in the loan and what's included in your loan. Or what so you're trying to save. Right. So that would, you know, that's something that you want to discuss with the people that you're purchasing the house for. That and your was our family. experience. And your family, Christian. And your family, right. Determine, you know, you and your family will determine um, how you want the landscape of your house to look. So that was the first thing. We went out and we did our share of clearing off the land and preparing the land. Don't you walk in front of that camera. <laughs> and preparing the land before hey everybody <laughs> before the contractors are ready to come out so the next step and my husband can probably add some share some light on this okay so the next step was the contractors coming out they came out and the, and the contractors that we use were actually the contractors that the builder clayton homes uses to set up their houses we didn't go looking for our own we use the contractors that they use to, to um for their homes to set up ours so they came out and they met with my husband and they actually determined where the house was would sit we didn't have we weren't picky about that there was zoning that they had to confirm um to see what the stipulations were some of the stipulations for our house was or for the property that we got since we moved to the city we didn't have to put a well and septic tank there was um, a sewer system already here. Electrical was already on the property. They just mainly came, and I, I can't think That's of the cool. name of them, but they came and they outlined, they put stakes in the ground that had orange ribbon on it. And they, they um, along with my husband, determined where the house would sit. So they put those stakes down at each corner of where the house would be. They also uh, showed the my husband. The thing about it was that 
we had to find out where the property line was and the city ordinances that the house had to be so many feet from the property line in the front, so many feet from the property line on the, oh, on the side. Oh, that's right. So that happened so, before right. the contractor came. So as a part of your closing process, there'll be an inspection and the survey will come out and determine where the property line is. Also as a part of- um, Survey didn't come out. The survey came out- The survey out, came out the survey the came, the closing. The surveyor came. The surveyor came out. The electrical people came. The line people came out to see. The surveyor came first. The, the surveyor the, the, sur the, the survey came out to see where the line was. Right for the property. Uh, for the for the for the for the electrical. What was the any kind of pipes no, going that about, way? We talking about two different things. So the first step, the surveyor came out and determined where our property was. Well. They already had a. They already had the survey. Already had had a. Uh, 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 outline of the property. Of where the property was. Well, he never did come out no more. He well, didn't come out here. All he did. All I did was get a. A, a print out. Right, but he came when we first entered under contract. He came out. Never here. came out him. Oh, he told you he never came. He never came. Well, that's. I tried to I meet him. I tried to meet him out him. And he said, he, well, already knew where the he said, was. well, your property line has already, has already been established. He said, you got one up there in the corner. You got one over there in that corner. He said, they, there are stakes down already. Those stakes have been out oh, there. Oh, gotcha. That's right. He confirmed where the stakes was. My husband came out here and saw the stakes. And he also emailed us, remember? He, he emailed, emailed us the, uh, the outline of the property. So right. we, that's how we knew where the property was, and he had to submit that as a part of the closing to the bank um, where we got our loan from. So after that, the contractor came out and him and my husband outlined where the house would go. They discussed trees that needed to come down and what needed to happen for the house to move in. But before they could get started, we had to call um, the county and have contractors come out from all the utilities and um, outline where all of the lines were. So that's what my husband was explaining just now. Electric came out. Uh, who else, baby? Cable, gas. Yeah, you had to find out where water. all the lines are. Water, sewage people had to come out and find out where the pipes and stuff run. Yeah. Uh, uh, any kind of phone that's on the ground, any kind of electrical that's on the ground. Yeah. All that had to be established. So, and then after that, Then the contractor would know where the house would be, and also determine. Me and the contractor got together out. after that and decided where I wanted to put the house, how I wanted it to look from the property to the road. Right. Right, and how it could be turned, how it could be situated. Right. From the back of the property line, it had to be so many feet to the I back. Think Forty feet from one side and sixty from another. Something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, then I had that room right there to work with. Right. And so then I said, well, I want, I want the house to be turned like this. Right. I want a corner over here. And he said, okay, then he put a stake down on that corner. Then he said, it'll be 60 or uh, 52 feet from there to that corner. Right. And he said, how far do you want it from that tree? And I told him, and that's where he put it at. That's where he put the he stake He put the at. stake at from the first stake. And he said, then you'll have... The side running down here, and then that's how the, that how the house got established. That's step. how the house got established. So yeah. very good. So there you are from somebody that was here. My husband um, <laughs> was able to take take part in that part of the process. Some of these details, I'm glad he's here to fill in because I'm going by what I remember that happened that he shared with me um, in conversation. He was here every day. Now, they determine how many feet from the front and how many feet from the back and all of that stuff by the zoning for our area. So whenever um, you are placed in a house, your, the and contractors the and you will need to work with the county to determine what the zoning requirements are for your area. Well, and, and not just for you. Yep. What was the last thing you said? I said the... the, 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 the the uh, 
place in the building is determined on how big the structure is. Right. Because, see, I could only, because this is like a 52 by... This house. Yeah, this house is a 52 by... It's a double wide, so if you got a smaller, if you got a smaller structure, you could twerk the building on the property better. I don't, I was limited. Right. I was limited to this. Because this is a quarter acre, right? Uh, zero point three something. Zero point three three acres. So that's a that's something else that you got to think about, you guys. I had recently had a subscriber reach out to me. Um, asking about how they should place the property to the east, to the west, what direction. How they should place it? The structure? The structure on, or your house on, on your property. property. And so those are questions that honestly I can't answer because number one, you know, it really depends on how big your property is versus the requirements um, from your county as zoning. How many feet from the front door to the front of the property, how many feet from the back door to the back of the property, and how much, how many feet on either side. See, your county may have stipulations on what that, that footage should be. So that's the first determination. Now, we had a smaller piece of property, but maybe you have a bigger piece of property and you have more, um, uh, room to make a decision as to where the house should be so then you can think about um what direction you want the house whether you want it to face the east or the west you know where the sun comes up and goes down will help you determine like how much light you want to come in on the house where where what you trees shade, you're going to be yeah, what, what shade, shade is tree. going to be on yeah. all of that will determine how you set the house up and the best person to talk to about that would be the contractor who is in charge of making sure your house comes out and gets set up and delivered because they have more experience especially with your area and a lot of places i think the subscriber was in arizona i'm in georgia i have no idea about the type of heat you guys um accrue and again remember my husband and i are sharing our personal experience, not our professional experience. We don't do this um, for a living. We actually went through it. And so we're hoping that our experience will help you guys. So now we've talked about what we did before the house came. And then we talked about our reasoning for where the house went. Now let's tell, now we're gonna talk about what happened to prepare the land once we did, once we got all the trees cut down and we were ready for the contractors to come out. So the contractors came out with a, what's the name of that tractor thing they were on? Bobcat. They came out with a Bobcat and where the house was going, they actually cleared off the land. Now I know I have plenty of clips there. So what you're seeing now is how they leveled, determined they leveled off the land using the Bobcat. Well, what they did was where we established where Come the house. Come here, honey, so, she... so where we established where we wanted the house to be uh, within the states that mean the contractor, his name was Mike, uh, where we wanted our house to be, that's where that guy came out with that front end loader and started to, within those boundaries, uh, where those stakes were, that's where he started to level the land off because the land was at a slope like this and he leveled it, leveled it off so that that building could sit there. And it, it was, it was, it sit within those uh, stakes according to where we wanted it facing the street and the sides and the back within the boundaries of the perimeter of where uh, the county had codes from the back and the side and the front. So, mm -hmm. so, so when they leveled off the land, they actually graded. They, when they graded, when they, they started graded. to graded it off. Yeah. When they graded the land before the concrete people came, a, as a part of the grading the land, we ended up with a hill behind the house, 
And a lot of questions that we get from subscribers is, what about that water um, draining off of that hill? Does it sit and cause damage to the back of oh, your house? Okay, so when so when 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 they when, when he graded that place off so as uh, for the foundation of the of the structure, what happened was that there was a because it because the the land the property that we had went down like this. Mm -hmm. He had to grade it off here. So that would be a flat surface mm -hmm. right there. So that so that that would be a uh, so that where our house going. Right. So, so it'll be level it, where the house. Right. Was and set. so when that water came, when he graded it off, he graded it off so that any water that came off that hill would go that way and go that way down into the streets off right. of the property. And not settle behind not the house. Not settle behind the house. Right. right. I right. knew that we had a drainage, a thing about drainage. <clears throat> But I didn't know what had happened. And, and also, now that we have gutters, that helps. It helps, like, the water comes down through those pipes that are attached to the right. gutter and goes towards right. the street. But what happens, what happens is that the house, the foundation is, sits here, and then the house sits on the foundation, and then the grading part of the landscape from your foundation the, the wall that's going to be built around your house at the bottom it's not flat mm -hmm. it's it's like an angle so any water that comes off of that comes off of that house runs off, runs off of that that land off of that side of that building down and around the side side into the sewer system gotcha so once they graded the land then the concrete people <clears throat> came and um once they graded the land sorry me my husband played tag team once they graded the land, the concrete people came out and they poured the footers um, for our foundation. And the footers are, our house is anchored to those footers. So in this clip, you'll see um, what the footers look like after they poured the concrete. That was the next step. After grading the land, getting it level, then the concrete had to be poured the concrete footers had to be poured. After they graded the land and got it level where the house was going to be, mm -hmm. the contractor dug footers around. He dug footers. Right, he dug a, a place See? for the footers Thank around. You, uh -huh. Because around the, where, where the house is going to sit. He mm -hmm. had to measure again, dig the footers, dig the footers. Then he called the concrete guy. Gotcha. Then the concrete guy came out and poured concrete and in poured, the footers and poured the concrete in the footers. Gotcha. Right. Right. Gotcha. So I can't remember the exact amount of time, but I just remember that it rained. I think three days. They said it would be ready in three days, but it, it rained. We had to deal with rain. Well, what happened was that he poured the footers. He poured the footers and and they and they got hard. Mm -hmm. I think it was like a day, day and a half, or two days, and they got hard. Then it started Then it to started rain. raining. Right. So that delayed us maybe a week or so from them bringing out the house. However, they said that normally, if I'm not mistaken, three days and they could bring the house. But we had to deal with rain. Right. Yeah. Because of that mud, all of that mud and wetness. You can't, you can't move that big old truck around with a half a house right and mother it and had to be dry yeah absolutely so that was the next step so we cleared off the land ourselves then the contractors came and graded the land or leveled the land then the footers were dug then the concrete was poured in and hardened into the, the concrete was poured in the footers and um it hardened and then the next step would be bringing out the house and we could actually talk about that in um another video i just wanted to share all of the steps that we went through you want to come back around here honey all of the steps that we went through as far as all of the steps that we went through as far as preparing our land now did you want to add something else before i close yeah a lot of a lot of the work that that was done here was uh uh they they set the house down on the foundation, anchored it down, and then I still had to go rent a, a bobcat, 
a front end loader and construct that driveway out there. Mm -hmm. I had to, because it was still on the slope, I had to grade it off. Mm -hmm. I had to grade it off. The house sit here and it was still like a little hill going down into the street. So I had to grade this off at a level so that the cars could come up and, and had to pull, had to put uh, gravel out there. Mm -hmm. I graded it off, leveled it out to an extent. It had a little slope on it so the water could still flow down to the street and to the sewage, but had to grade it off. Mm -hmm. Then get that gravel, had a gravel man come out here and pull me some gravel out there. And I took that front end loader and made that whole driveway gravel. Gotcha. For two cars. For two cars. Yeah. And we could actually talk about the driveway and what we did to prepare the driveway in a little more detail in another video. I just wanted to basically talk about preparing the land in this video. Hopefully I answered your questions. If you have more questions about the detail, <laughs> thanks honey, more questions about the detail of preparing the land from our perspective, we'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Also, let me give you this disclaimer. This may not be your experience. You may not have to do anything to your yard, right? We did a lot of the work to save money off the cost of our budget. If we had more money in our budget, then the contractors could have done it all. They could have cleared off the land. They could have leveled, um, they they didn't do our driveway. We took care of our driveway. That could be decks. that could be added into the cost of your loan. They didn't do our decks. We did our loan decks. That is something that could be added into the cost of your loan. So our experience may not be your experience. I have a very handy husband who was able to build decks, uh, gray driveway, get concrete delivered, and pour concrete. Um, a lot cut trees down and a lot of stuff. My husband has done a lot of stuff around this property that he put uh, uh, privacy fence, all kind of stuff, landscaping, all kind of stuff. So, you know, that may not be your experience. Some of that stuff could have been added into our loan. We opted out of that. And then toward the end, trying to make the numbers work, we added the driveway and decks to our plate. So that may, that was our experience. Um, it may not be yours. You may have enough money in your loan that all you have to do is sign on the dotted line, right? And then they take care of the rest. So again, that goes back to working with whoever you're purchasing your home from. They can tell you what will be included in the cost of your setup and delivery and if you need to offset any of that cost, they'll tell you that too. Thank you so much for tuning in. How much money you got? That's what it really <laughs> depends on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in um, today to this video. Again, I'm the Mobile Home Diva. And here we talk about anything mobile home, mobile home tours, mobile home living, mobile home decor. We do shop with me, all kind of stuff, anything mobile home. If that's what you're interested in, make sure that before you click off this video, you click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you're the first one to know when I upload a video. Thanks so much for watching and thanks, honey, for joining the Mobile Home Devo.